no knowledge of any being more supreme. Well, I would be glad to introduce them to one if they'd, be, if they'd lie. I know one. Amen. It's a whole lot more supreme. I mean, can you imagine if the infinite God could fit in your little three-pound brain? <laughs> it wouldn't be very big, and he sure wouldn't be worth worshiping. Man, the God that I worship is beyond comprehension. Amen. Amen. I mean, he tells us a lot about himself, but your brain just can't handle it. Neither can mine. So, this guy said, the turning point in history will be the moment that man becomes aware that the only God of man is man himself. Some of these guys think they are God. Boy, that was Hitler's philosophy. I'm God. I'm God. I'm God. I'm God. I'm God. I'm God. Hey, Gabriel, come and listen to this. Ha, 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 ha. We're not such big stuff, folks. <clears throat> George Wald, the Nobel Prize winner, said, I will not accept that, talking about creation, philosophically, because I do not want to believe in God. Therefore, I choose to believe in that which, is, I, know is, which I know is scientifically impossible. Spontaneous generation arising to evolution. He said, I know it's not possible, but the only other alternative is God did it. And I don't want that, so I'll believe the impossible. Well, you're going to feel awful stupid for eternity. No one, you missed the opportunity to live forever with the creator of the universe because you were willingly ignorant, just like 2 Peter says. This guy says, we no longer feel ourselves to be guests in someone else's home. He's talking about God. This is Rifkin, who's one of those tree huggers who writes all kinds of books about, you know, save the environment, kill all the people, but save the environment. Jeremy Rifkin said, we no longer feel ourselves to be guests in somebody else's home and therefore obliged to make our behavior conform to a set of pre-existing cosmic rules. It's our creation now. We make the rules. We establish the parameters of reality. We create the world, and because we do, we no longer feel beholden to outside forces. Talking about God, of course. He said, we no longer have to justify our behavior, for we are now the architects of the universe. We are responsible to nothing outside of ourselves. So we are the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Wow, is right. The Bible said in 2 Peter, in the last days, scoffers would come that would be willingly ignorant of how God made the heavens and the earth, and the earth was standing into the water and out of the water. We cover all that on video number two. The Bible says the scoffers are going to be walking after their own lust. You know, the only reason people reject God is because of their lust. There's no scientific reason to reject the Bible. There's no scientific reason to reject the creation account. There's no scientific reason to reject the idea that there's a creator. But some people just don't like the idea of God telling them what to do. The idea of God chaps their hide. Well, I tell them they better get some Vaseline, man. They're going to need it because we're going to be judged by the very God you don't believe in. This guy says, We take the side of science in spite of the patent absurdity of some of its constructs, in spite of its failure to fulfill many of its extravagant promises of health and life, in spite of the tolerance of the scientific community for unsubstantiated just-so stories, because we have a prior commitment, a commitment to materialism. He said, materialism is an absolute. We cannot allow a divine foot in the door. A professor that I had at, uh, in Illinois Central College in East Peoria, Illinois, wrote a really cool article years ago. It was two computers, computers arguing with each other, does man exist? <laughs> Showing the absurdity of two humans trying to argue, does God exist? The computers couldn't see, them, couldn't see man, so therefore he didn't exist. And they were going through all kinds of explanations of how, you know, they gradually got all this circuitry by ch blind chance. The same kind of dumb arguments the evolutionists do, trying to explain how life arose by chance. What happened? Satan put it into the heart of some of his followers that they should build a kingdom and rule the world. And they really have serious plans to build a world empire right here. And you and I do not fit in. Matter of fact, they're anxious to get rid of us, big time, okay? Secretly, secretly Satan plans to use his followers to destroy much of humanity. But then he's going to destroy them also. The communists have done that for years. They always get some revolutionaries to go in and take over a country. And the first thing the communists do when they take over, they kill the revolutionaries that, that killed everybody else because they can't trust them. And Satan, Satan is using some of his followers and they've got it in their head that they need to reduce the population of the planet. We cover all that on videotape number one or in our college course, CSE 101. We cover that in great detail. How that there are people who think we should reduce man's population here to one half billion. You can go to Elberton, Georgia and see the Georgia Guidestones where it says right on there, maintain humanity under a half billion. Right now there are six billion. They want to reduce the population by about 95% according to Ted Turner. 
I said, well, go ahead, Ted, you first. <laughs> they just get off any time you want. Now, if evolution is true, then who owns the world? Who makes the rules? How do we determine right from wrong? I've asked people all over the place, how do you tell right from wrong if evolution is true? There simply is no possible way to tell right from wrong. It's a real simple question, but they have no answer. You can't tell right from wrong if evolution is true. Uh, if man is God, and this is what evolution means, then man makes the rules and the strongest survive. Might makes right. There's no way to tell right from wrong. I had a professor tell me one time, there are no absolutes. I said, are you absolutely <laughs> sure? <laughs> Blew his little brain. Now let me think for just a minute. How can I be absolutely? Yeah, of course they're absolutes. Kids today are wandering around in this world with no moral anchor because they don't know right from wrong. They really don't. There simply is no way to tell. Now, folks, there's a war going on, and you're going to have to decide which side you want to get on. You can't be neutral in this one. During the Civil War, this one fellow decided he did not want to get involved. By the way, it's not the Civil War, it's Abe Lincoln's War, another long story. We should cover that on CSC 103, okay, the college class number three, uh, 103. During the Civil War, though, this guy decided he, did not, he didn't want to get involved. So he put on a Yankee jacket and rebel pants. He said, both sides will leave me alone now. Well, after the battle, he was found dead, his Yankee jacket full of rebel bullet holes and his rebel pants full of Yankee bullet holes. <laughs> Folks, there's a war going on. You might as well get on one side or the other. Just give it all you got. Give it to your general, okay? You just say, Lord, here I am reporting for duty. What would you like me to do? Amen. Here's the problem, as I understand it. There's a war going on between Satan and God. We are the battlefield. People are going to get hurt. People are going to get killed. You better just get on one side or the other. The decision is very simple. You just decide which side you want to be on and then do whatever your general says. If you want to serve the devil, you just go ahead. If you want to serve God, come on. It's wonderful. Henry Morris has a tremendous book on this topic, The Long War Against God. If you want to understand the history of the evolutionary conflict, this one is awesome. There's another one, I don't know if it's a close second or maybe a tie with this one, called In the Minds of Men by Ian Taylor. One of the best books I've ever read covering the, the whole history of this. Why do people think this way? And I encourage people to read good books. Now kids, you're going to be the same person you are 20 years from now as you are right now, except for the books you read and the people you meet. Shut off the TV once in a while and read some books. There are many good books that will influence you forever. Man, I've read books that just changed my life. Brother, you, know, you come across some, it's like, wow, you're just a different person from then on. Now, the Christians have an incredible advantage in this war. Uh, I read the last chapter. We win. Amen. Now, between now and then, it's going to get pretty bad. We're going to cover some things tonight about the New World Order. It might be a little scary. Folks, you don't need to get nervous. I read lots of books about the New World Order. I think I have a fairly good grasp of what's going on. I read about the microchip and all kinds of things happening, you know, and I see the world events, and then I go to sleep. Because Psalm 2 is a great tranquilizer for that. We cover a whole lot more on the New World Order on our CSE class of 103 for the college, four different college courses that we offer. You can call our website for that. We're going to trace a little bit of the history of the conflict and then tell you what you can do about it. Things, practical things you can do for your general. God created the world. He owns it, and he makes the rules. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's. If you don't like it, then go make your own world. <laughs> but he owns this place. About 6,000 years ago, probably within the first few hundred years after the creation, Lucifer decided he wanted to be God. There's no possible way Lucifer fell, Lucifer fell from heaven before the creation. We cover all that on videotape number two about the gap theory and the day-age theory. Satan could not have fallen before the creation. So sometime after the creation, maybe a hundred years, Lucifer decided he wanted to be God. So <clears throat> God created the world. Satan rebelled against God and tried to destroy his creation. That's the subject of this session. First of all, it appears that uh, Satan wants to do at least three things. He wants to make mankind wicked so God will have to destroy them. Satan made everybody wicked in the days of Noah and God had to kill them all, all but Noah and his family. So Satan works very hard to make people wicked just so that God will have to destroy his creation. That's one of Satan's goals. Number two, he wants to convince some men to destroy other men. You guys like Adolf Hitler thinking they ought to kill the Jews, and guys like Paul Pot thinking they ought to kill the Cambodians. I mean, people think they ought to kill everybody. You got guys in the Taliban think they ought to kill anybody that won't convert to Islam. And by the way, the Koran clearly teaches if a person will not convert to Islam, they should be executed. 
We cover all that on video number seven. Now, praise God for the people that are trying to reach the Muslims, and they need the gospel like everybody else. But they're in the middle, they're absolutely brainwashed with the silly idea that if they're a good, faithful member of the Islam, they get to go to heaven and get 72 wives. They never thought about the 72 mother in laws. <laughs> <laughs> they're having to feed them 72 wives. <laughs> Talk about, it, it's, we could get off on a long rabbit trail. We're going to do a whole videotape someday just on the dangers of Islam and that teaching. Now, the people can be saved and make great Christians. And God loves them, but He hates what they believe. They've been duped. You ought to get the book that we sell in our bookstore called The Prophet. If you want to understand the history of the Muslim church and how it got started, it'll scare you when you realize what, who started it and why. Get into that some other time. Number three, Satan wants to keep as many people from hearing the gospel as possible. And that's where the evolution theory comes into the textbooks. The kids have an alternative explanation for how the world got here, so they never even consider looking for the real creator of the universe. Satan's used many different people and methods to accomplish his goals. He makes men think he is God, makes man think he is God, and makes the rule. Satan knew this would lead to genocide. Once people think they're in charge, well, then they decide they're going to rearrange the world today with the way they want it. So we're going to kill those that we don't want to be here. Ezekiel 28 tells about Lucifer. It says, Thou wast perfect in the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. The heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. God said, I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut, cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? You know, Satan is, this battle is really Satan versus God. It's not, you know, us versus them or cowboys versus Indians. It's Satan versus God. That's what it really boils down to. Satan, Isaiah tells us that Satan said, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man? that made the earth to shake, the earth to tremble, and did shake the kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities. You know, Judgment Day, we're going to stand before God, and we're going to see Satan getting ready to cast into hell. We're going to say, this is, the, this is it? That's it? How many saw the movie Wizard of Oz? Remember when they finally realized it's a little old man behind the curtain pulling those levers. That's it? That's Oz? <laughs> That's the way we're going to feel when we see Satan. You've got to be kidding. That's it? When I went to um, Massachusetts, first time to speak at a church up there, I went to see Plymouth Rock, you know, where the pilgrims landed, you know. And we walked up to this little pavilion, and the preacher said, well, go ahead and say it. I said, say what? He said, say what everybody says when they see Plymouth Rock. I said, that's it? He said, yep, that's it. That's what everybody says. <laughs> it's a rock about this big with a date on there, 1620, you know. That's it, yeah. We're going to look at Satan and say, that's the one that made the nations tremble? You've got to be kidding and the people who are going to go to hell for eternity are going to feel awfully dumb realizing they got, they got deceived by such a simple process. They were so blinded. How many of you have ever been fooled and you felt just real stupid afterwards? You ever do that? <laughs> like a duh, how could I be fooled by that? That's the way folks that go to hell are going to feel. Like, wow, you got to be kidding. Satan is making his plans to rule the world like Pinky in the brain. <laughs> God's up in heaven laughing about it. Now look, when you get all nervous about the new world order, just read Psalms chapter 2. It's a great tranquilizer. Psalm 2 said, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves. The rulers take counsel together against the Lord, against His anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. You know, they've got plans for a new world order. They really do. They have plans for an electronic currency where you can't buy anything without a chip in your hand or in your forehead. Plans are coming soon. There are plans to control the planet. They're, they want to control the food. They want to control the population. They want you to get a permit to cut your grass and cut down a tree on your property. They 